So, as we start in prompt four, last night I asked you to go home and, and do some digging on this. Okay, I'm going to hopefully you can come back and answer some questions for me. So, out of the problem here, I know we, we, experience, we experiment with sound waves on what we can hear as a human and what a dog can hear. Um, but since I'm asking you to represent as an inequality, and there's a special word here, and I hope, I hope that you actually tell me what it means. Have you ever heard of the word compound before in your life? Compound word. Compound. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you hear that from? Science and language arts. Science and language arts. Mainly in language arts, right? Because mm -hmm. you, you hear your teacher describing this a lot. The compound, complex sentence, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to have a compound sentence? To put together. Yeah. Oh, to put together. <laughs> so how many sentences do you need to put together? Two. 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 Same thing for math. If I want you to write a compound inequality, it means you need to have two to begin with. Put them together, and that's a compound inequality. Easy to understand, and it applies. Okay? All right, so that's what compound is. Have you ever heard of a, a union before in your life? Yeah. Where did you hear that from? <coughs> credit credit union. union. Oh, jeans. What is it? <laughs> okay, good. Come on, credit union. But in your class, in other class besides that, where did you hear the word Social union? Studies. Social study. Mm -hmm. Can you give an example of that? <laughs> huh? Where did you hear the union? The word union. I just heard it. <laughs> I'm talking in your, in your uh, history class. When did the union term being used? Yes. Um, huh? The Civil War. What does it mean to have a union then? <laughs> Excuse me. Listen carefully. I'm not asking you to tell me what a uh, city that's named using the word union. I'm asking when do we use it for in terms of using the word union? A group, you said. Yes. Okay, fine. Community. So, huh? Community. Community. Okay, group. So basically, uh, you put a whole bunch of things together, and that's a union, isn't it? Or when we have a, a lot of people gathered, that's a union, isn't it? Mm. Like family reunion, in a sense, and, yeah. and that's how we. Con or did you hear this? Uh, the State of the Union address. No. <laughs> Ever? Yeah. We hear. We actually. Uh, they have this. Uh, on the news too, when the, the president uh, deliver his speech to the the nation, we, they he called that the State <laughs> of the Union address. Okay, but anyway, when people gather and and, and uh, you know, um, when people gather in a sense, that's what a union is. Uh, what about intersection? Um, Have you crossing. intersection? Crossing. Oh, crossing. Okay, good. Uh, in math, did we do yeah. something with intersection yeah. before? Can you give an example? Uh, chapter, five. chapter 5. Very good. What did I do with intersection? What did I show you? Um, the points. The, oh, oh, it has to do with points. So what does it mean? When two lines intersect, what will happen? They will cross from each other. They overlap. When two lines intersect, they overlap? Well, in a sense, yes, but overlap at what? <laughs> Think. Can you visualize in your head? Two lines intersecting. Each other they, cross? they cross over at a point. a point. Thank you. A point. Is that true? Yeah. You have two lines intersecting. They cross over together uh, at, over each other at a point, and that point is called a point. 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 Uh, intersection point. Intersection point. Midpoint. Whoa, whoa. When, you, <laughs> when two lines intersect forms a point, and that point from what we learned in chapter 5, what's that point called? Does that do something with concrete? No. <laughs> a solution to your problem, guys. Remember I did GeoGebra sh show you? I, sh I, I graph two different equations in a sec. I take that, and that is not your solution to the problem? Okay. So, something to remember. Okay. For Union and intersection as we start on this particular uh, prompt right here. Let's go back to this. Um, in this prompt, notice that I compare humans and dogs, what we can hear and what dogs can hear. For humans, we can hear from 20,000, I mean 20, 20 hertz all the way to 20,000 hertz, right? For dogs, we, they can hear from 15 hertz all the way to 50,000 hertz. Now, do you understand that range at all? When I say, can a dog hear this her this sound, you just tell me yes or no, okay? okay. Can a dog hear five hertz? No. Yes. no. Okay, I still hear people saying yes. No. Okay, who said yes? 
Please, it's okay. It's okay. I asked, can a dog, honestly, did you hear yes? Yeah, see? Oh, come on. See, see? You're, you're so afraid to admit that, hey, I said it. Fine. It's okay you said it. You said, good. It's okay, even if it's not you. You said five hertz. I said, can a dog five here at five hertz? Well, look at the range. From 15 to 50,000 hertz. Is five hertz in that range? If no. your answer is no, that means the answer is no. It cannot hear it, right? It has to be 15 hertz or above, all the way to 50,000 hertz. So let me see. Here's the next question. Can a human hear at 21,000 hertz? Yeah. No. no. Yes, we can. Yeah. No, I'm so, saying no. a normal human being. No. Uh, <laughs> I know. I'm saying typical human being. Can we hear at 21,000 hertz? Okay. As you can see, I demonstrated yesterday, it's kind of hard to hear at 20, 000, uh, 21,000 hertz. Because the, the pitch will be so high, your ear will have a hard time tuning to it. Okay? For me personally, I can't even hear at 18,000 hertz. So there you go. Uh, that's what it means. So using that information, let's put together an inequality. Let's do human first. I'm just going to do everything on human right now. So here's human. And I'm trying to come up and uh, describe what human can hear. Okay? So in this case, a human here can hear from 20 to 20,000 hertz. It asks us to write a compound inequality for the hearing range of humans and then do one for dogs as well. So let's do human. What can you say about human again? I forgot. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Oh man. Did you hear what he just said? We all have problems with hearing, huh? What can human hear? Is that true? No. Okay. What can human hear? 20 hertz. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, it's fine. See? Hey, good thing this is a hearing problem, right? And here we are to kind of correct this. Okay, fine. So human can hear from 20 hertz all the way to 20,000 hertz. If I ask you to, be, I mean, yeah, by, by saying it, you can describe it. What if I ask you to be, describe it using an inequality? What can you say to write down as an inequality? Well, this is how you would do it. Now I'm going to ask you to do it for dogs. We can say, let's declare a variable for human. Let's say we don't know what sound wave um, level we're hearing right now. I'm just going to declare it. H for human of what a human can hear in hertz. So I'm just going to go ahead and measure that in hertz. So H is what a human can hear in hertz. Since we say that a human can hear from 20 hertz all the way to 20,000 hertz, right? There's limitation to what we can hear. Can the human hear below 20 hertz? No. No. Okay, good. So that means it has to be above 20 hertz, right? Is that true? Can the human hear at exactly 20 hertz? Based on the information given. So based on that information, what can you say of our first inequality? Well, we can hear 20 hertz or above. So how do you take that information and write it into an inequality? 20 hertz or above. Thank you. So a human can hear greater than or equal to 20 hertz. Yeah, that's how we write our inequality. Is that hard? So to write an inequality, first declare a variable for it. If you don't have a variable to work with, you can't write an inequality, people. Okay, so make sure you, first and foremost, declare your, uh, your variable. Okay, next one. What else do we know about our human? We can hear 20 hertz or above, and then what else? What's the other part of it? Is there a limitation to our hearing? Yeah. What? Up to what? So we can also hear what? Less than or equal to 20,000. Very good. Is that good? Okay, look. So we have two inequalities. And notice, since I'm asking you to write a compound, just like how we write a com compound sentence, we put two sentences into one. Here, we put two inequalities into one. And the way that we do it is really simple. We just have to eliminate one variable and put everything together. Watch. We have two H, which is in common, right? I'm just going to use one H. And we say, wait, a human can hear 20 hertz or above, but less than or equal to 20,000 hertz. And this is how we represent our compound inequality. That's it. So instead of writing two separate inequalities, we put them together as one, and we use one less letter. You see the, the catcher? That's it. We're saving one var variable. That's it. So, compound inequality. Okay, now, can you do the one for dog? Go ahead. 
Do one for dog. Let me put this information back here. Look at dogs. 15 to 50,000. So can you actually come up and do one for dog? Go ahead. <clears throat> when you're ready, tell me what to write. Oh, that thing up. Oh, by the way, for those who <clears throat> need to access to this, and you don't have internet access at, at home, all these problems are in your textbook, by the way. So problem four is in section 6-4. Look at the word problems. It's there. OK? So the next problem, for example, in uh, problem five, is going to be in section 6-5. <coughs> Excuse me. OK. You don't have to write the entire problem down. So we took care of humans. Let's take care of dogs. What can you say? Oh, good. Declare. D is what a dog can hear. OK, <coughs> what's next? Loud, say it loudly, please. Very good. A dog can hear 15 or above hertz, right? That's what we say greater than or equal. What else? D is less than or equal to volume. Very good. Oh, because it says so in the table. Here, 15 to 50,000, right? So make sure you read your information correctly. <clears throat> okay, now I want you to write a compound. Okay, 15 is less than or equal to D. Very good. So there you have it. Your compound inequality for dogs. Question. Is that easy enough to understand? Very good. Okay. So let's get on to, let's tackle intersection first. And I'm going to cover union with you, okay? I'm going to go ahead and use the case for human, and now I'm going to ask you to do for dog again, okay? Just, just go ahead and, and, and listen to me. For human, we have, human can hear anything above or equal to 20 hertz. So with that information, I'm going to do a quick graph for human. Here's a zero, and I'm trying to graph this. Can you help me to graph this? What do I do now? Put the 20, okay. Now what? Goes to the right. Oh, it goes to the right. Okay. And close. And close. Very good. Why close? Because it's equal to. It's less than or equal to. I know, but it means when you know, when I say close, it means in, oh, okay, good, included. What else? Okay, so another way is that a human can hear less than or equal to twenty thousand hertz. How do I graph that piece? Since we're talking about human, so I'm going to go ahead and graph it on the same number line. Put down okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put down twenty thousand. Okay. You go, to the left. go to the left. And close. And close too. Very good. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Just pretend this for a moment, okay? Let's pretend that I can actually move this line. If I take the, the line above, not a line, it's a ray, but if I take that uh, ray above and move it and put it right on top of the ray below it, what will happen? There'll be a point and... Okay, what's that word again? Overlap. Overlap. Ah, interesting. So, wouldn't you agree that if I take that ray above and put it right on top of the ray below it, you will see an overlapping section right there. Is that true? Yes. And so, to cleanly draw that part, part, is this the part that you will see that's overlapped? Yes. So, I'm just going to go ahead and label that overlapped. Yes, please. Overlapped. Now, I want you to take that overlap piece that I just drew up here and compare that to the compound inequality that I just did for you here. Look down here. Do you see anything that's described the overlap? Yeah. You know how to, you notice that this is like a graphical representation of this compound inequality? Yes. That the human can hear between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Look at the overlap. A human can hear anything from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Anything in between that. It makes sense. So what we have here is a 
graphical representation of our compound inequality. Right? Simple, logical. And now we have a term for that. And when we have such a case where the two overlap and we just look at that solution only, the part that's overlapped only, we call that an intersection case. Okay? And to shorten it, sometimes they will just call it an N case. N or intersection. It's the same thing. N, A and D, or intersection. And the key word that I need you to remember all the time is overlap. That's what I look for for an intersection case or uh, an N case. Overlap. Are they overlapped? Are they overlapped? Are they? If yes, well, there it is. You have your solution right there as an N case. So N associates with overlap. And now, to represent the solution, there's a, a special way to represent it. I need you to remember how to represent it. It's actually really simple. It's just a format that you have to follow, so please listen closely. Here we go. We need first to open our curly brace. I know it doesn't have to be a perfect curly brace, okay? It doesn't have to be, but this is how you say it. You will start with your variable that you defined before. This simply means there exists this variable h. This line right here means such that there exists h such that well, look at our solution. It's from 20 hertz all the way to 20,000 hertz, right? So I'm basically borrowing this right here and write it in. So my solution is going to be such that H is in between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. I close my brace, and that's how I complete my solution. Just extra, extra, you know, um, stuff to put in to, to come up with your solution. So I'm still using the same thing here, but I just put in the opening and closing brace, uh, curly brace, and, uh, you know, a, a few minor details. Okay? And this here would represent the case for humans. Intersection case. Now, can you do the one for dogs? Go ahead. I want you to do a, an intersection case for dogs as well. See what you can actually come up with. And once you're ready to go, just tell me what you write. Do we have an overlap case for dogs as well? Yes. Yes, very good. Okay, so we have that. Let's start with, I'm um, just going to write down the, uh, the information that we had before. Dog can hear 15 or above, but less than or equal to 50,000, right? Let's graph that. <clears throat> what do we put here? Zero. Okay. Zero. Next? Fifteen. Fifteen, okay. To the right. To the right. Close or open? Close. Close. To the right. Next? 50,000. 50, okay. To the, right. to the left. Close or open? Close. Good. Overlapping? Yes. Yes. Right here. Right? So you can clearly see that when I transfer it down, I have to make sure I keep everything intact. Even the closed circle has to be the same too. And there's my overlapping piece. Okay? So how do you write your solution? Here's a curly brace, opening, D, line. line, so just say such that, okay? Fifteen, less than or equal to, D, which is dog, okay? Very good, that's it, this is how we represent our solution. And this here, guys, is called an intersection case. Because we only focus, notice what, my solution only focus on the overlapping piece. Overlapping associate with intersection, which also means N. Let me give you an example to clearly demonstrate that. Watch this. 
What if I have the following graph, and I have a negative 2 right here and a 7 right here. I have one going like this, the other one going like this. Okay, with this particular problem, and I want you to go ahead and do an intersection for me, meaning end case. Can you remind me once again what intersection means again? What am I looking for, focusing on? Overlap. So I'm looking for the piece that's overlapped. Is there a piece that's overlapped here? Where's the part that's overlapped? After seven. Very good. So can you just go ahead and shade that in and say, oh, yeah, this is a part that's overlapped. you got to demonstrate that. Is seven included? No. Ah, if it's not included, what can we use? Just the line. Just a line. And just without the? So, so how do we represent it? Just, just say I'm going to use x as my variable. How do I represent this case? Greater than? Greater than? Do we say equal? No. Oh, good. The part is overlapped only. Oh, seven. Very good. And this is our solution. That's it. You see it? When I say intersections, I only focus on the part that's overlapped. And the reason I don't include 7 is because it's an opening <coughs> circle, right? I don't include 7. Therefore, it's no bar below. Okay, any questions so far in overlapping? Okay. Let's see if we can actually do this. Here's a new problem. I want you to do an intersection for me again. I mean, notice I'm using N, I mean intersection as well. Okay. Is there a solution here? Why? There's an overlap. Very good. So you just say no solutions. Easy. No overlap, no solution. That's for an N case. Because we're focusing on is there an overlap or not? If not, just say no solution. Okay, here we go. What if I have the following? Here's a tricky one. Ask yourself, notice once again, I'm doing an intersection. Is there an overlap? Yes or no? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Who said no? Who thinks that the answer is no? <laughs> okay. Why? <laughs> oh. So, are you telling me that this stops right here? Does it stop, really? Even though I cut it off right there, it doesn't mean it stops there, isn't it? Technically, it will extend forever. I'm just too lazy to extend it. So, in your mind, you got to actually extend it yourself like that. See that? So, now, is there an overlap? Yes, from where? Do we include negative 1? No. See, you got to be very careful with that. We don't include negative 1, do we? So when we shade this, I know there's the, the part here. So let's, let's say I'm going to use x again. So how do we write this? x. I already got that. It's x such that, okay. Okay, greater than negative 1, right? Do we include negative 1? No, so that's why we don't have the bar below. What else? Are we done? No. Less than. Less than? Two. Do we include it? Yes. There. And that's how we represent our solution. Do you see that? Isn't this describe what's happening here on the graph? That the solution in between negative one and two, but we don't include negative one? We see that or no? Okay. And this is something that I want you to pick up as you see the actual problem. Graph it and come up with your own solution. Okay, and there we go. We have n case again. All right, so the question now is, what, what happened if it's an or case or the union case? So let's just go ahead and dive right into that part to really understand what a union case really means. So union case, or also known as the or case, what I really want you to remember out of the union case is what's being covered. 
Notice I don't care about overlapping. I just care about is it covered or not. So if it's covered, that's part of my union. I pick up everything. If you're here, you're part of my union. That's what it is. So when I give you a graph such as this, watch what happened. Let's say I have a graph going like that, another one going like this. And I ask you, can you tell me a solution to this problem? Okay. Since I'm asking, listen, since I'm asking for a union case, if I ask for an end case, which is an intersection, you will say no solutions, right? Because they don't overlap. But a union case is completely different than that. I don't look for overlapping piece. I only look for what is covered, meaning the number that's being covered by the line. Which part is covered by the line? Greater than 5 or less than negative 2, right? Notice I'm using the word or 2 to make sure I, I, fit, I use the word union correctly. And it's for the previous case and this is or case. So, because your solution covered two parts, that's what you list down. What's covered? List them all. So when you write it, this is what you write. Here's an x such that a solution is going to be, oh wait, it's going to be greater than 5 or what? Less than negative 2. And that's it. That's how you write a union case. Everything that's covered, you list them. We don't care about overlapping. As long as it's covered. Notice that part that's not covered, I don't list, huh? You see it? I only list the part that's covered. <coughs> yes? The other way? Yeah, sure. As long as you have the or to put them together. Because or indicate union. Okay? This or that works both ways. Okay? Try this one. If I have the following right here to tell me, tell me the solution of this. I'm looking for the union case once again, or, not and. Okay, you got to watch for my, my uh, question. I'm looking for or case, which is union. Union, I don't care about overlapping, so don't care about overlapping at all. I only care about what's covered. What number is being covered by your line above? Mm -hmm. So in this case, what's being covered? What is it? Mm -hmm. Just greater than? Negative. Is negative 2 included? Yeah. Okay. Is that the only one? Is that the one that covers everything? Yeah. Very good. You're done. Why is it that I don't write x greater than 1? Why? No, no. Why is it that I don't write this? Why? Huh? It was very good. Well, actually, no. Isn't the line above already cover everything already? It's like a redundant, so you only need it. You see it? So we don't we don't write redundancy in the sense if it's re repeated, we don't write it. If it's already covered from before, we don't have to write it again. So for the negative two right here, since it's already covered everything that we need to cover. You don't need to list out x greater than 1 again. Because x greater than 1 is part of the previous one. Okay? And that this is all that we have. Questions at all for you? Let's test you on this one. Let's see if you can actually list this. I'm going to ask you to do two cases for me. Here's the first one. This is at 7. I want you to do an end case, which is an intersection. Remember end case means overlap. So, do we have a solution here? Why? Very good. Both open, no overlapping, right? So we would just say no solution. What about the or case, which is the uh, union case? Okay, so what, what can you say about that? X is what? Such that what? Okay, so you say X is greater than 7 or? Right? Very good. Or, what you can actually say is X not equal to 7. Anything but 7, right? To shorten it. But there, either way is fine. Question so far. You see how union, we don't care about overlapping, we just care about what's covered. 
and based on this, everything is covered except for seven. Right? Therefore, I list everything out except seven. But for the overlapping piece or the end case, since we don't have overlapping, we just say no solution. Okay. You getting this? Okay. <coughs> Here's the last test for you. See, you can actually pick this up. Yeah, yeah, please. It's good. Good. We practice anyway. Got it, Ken? Got it? Okay. All right. Check this one out. What, what happened? The other one's not x, not equal to x. Okay. So here's a problem. I have negative three and I have five. I have one going like this, the other one going like this. I want you to go ahead and come up with an end case for me. What do you write as your solution for the end case? Raise your hand if you have the answer. N case. What does it mean to have the N case? N means intersection number. Okay? So, if I want you to write this as a solution, what do you tell me about this? Ready for the answer? What do you say? Yes. <coughs> Very good. Less than five, greater than negative three. Because clearly, you see that there is an overlapping piece right there, isn't it? And since both of them are open, I do not have the bar below the symbol. Makes sense, right? And my answer has to be less than 5 and greater than negative 3. That's the end case. So depending on the case that I give you, you just have to pick different answer choices. Now, what if I ask for the OR case? What can you say about the OR case? What does OR indicate again? What's that? N means overlap. OR means everything's okay. Is everything covered? Is, is it covered? Is there anything that's not covered? Mm -hmm. So is everything covered? That means everything's part of your solution? Right? In that case, just say all real. <laughs> so when everything's covered, you say all real. And it, it makes sense. Look, from left to right, there's nothing, there's no gap at all, right? Everything's covered. Therefore, you have all real numbers as the solution. <laughs> yes. Okay. So do you see the difference between an N and an OR case? N means intersection, which is overlapping. OR means union, meaning what's being covered, right? And you just list them all out. Okay, very good. Now that we have a good idea of that, I want to go ahead and go back to this right here and see what you can come up with. Write an inequality or an inequality for the range of sounds that dogs can hear, but humans cannot. So. Can you tell me what part of the sound wave human cannot hear, but dogs can? Give me a very specific range, please. So are you telling me that dogs can hear 30,000 or all the way to 50,000? What about 29,000? Is 29... Think about it. What can... A dog here, but humans cannot hear. Huh? Wait, what, can cannot hear, but dogs can. Uh, Let's think about that for a moment. Okay, if you see thirty thousand, think about this. What about what about twenty five thousand? Can human hear twenty five thousand? But can dog hear from 5,000? So you're missing something when you say, oh, it has to be about 30,000, right? You're missing a lot of sound waves there. Yes. 
kind of talking, I'm saying what a dog can hear, but a human cannot. What is it? At least 21,000? Okay, you say, if you say at least 21,000, that means anything less than 21,000, a dog can hear? <laughs> what about, okay, when you say 21,000 or above, what about 20,999? Can a dog hear at 20,999? Huh? Can it hear at 20,999? What about 20,001? But can a human, based on this table, hear at 20,001? Okay, so now, based on that information, what can you say about dog? That a human cannot. <laughs> okay, instead of saying this, instead of saying it has to be greater than or equal to 20,000, one, what can you say so that you don't have to use a new value? Thank you. Is that the same thing? Anything greater than 20,000 mean 20,001 or above? Right? So, this is the upper range, but it also has to be less than or equal to 50,000, right? Because that's part of the dog. What, what about the lower range? We have the lower range, don't we? Lower range. Look at this. Less than 20. Ah, what is it? Very good. A dog can hear less than 20, but a human cannot. We're listing out what a human cannot hear, right? A human cannot hear anything above 20,000, and a human cannot hear anything below 20 hertz. Is that true? And this is what dogs can hear. But also, there's a limit to this, too. It has to be above or equal to 15. Right? So we really want to put everything together as a compound. We can if you want to. Right? But this is what I want you to be able to see, what you can actually come up with as far as what a dog can hear and what a human cannot, you gotta, if you have to graph it on a number line, you will clearly see where the two line cross, I mean the, the two line overlap and where which part they don't overlap. The part they don't overlap where they don't share, that's the part that a dog can hear and a human cannot. Okay, well let's just kind of visually demonstrate this for you. I know it's kind of, but look, if this is the number line, think of this as 15 and this is 20 right here. This is 20,000, and this is 50,000. Human can hear from here to here. Is that true? Right? This is human. Dog can hear from 15 all the way to 50,000, right? This is dog. You see this part that's overlapped? This is what you have in common with dog. But the part that's not overlapped, which is from here to here, from here to here. You see that? This is the part that we cannot hear, but dogs can. And isn't it part of what we have here as our inequality? Okay. So sometimes it is hard for you to come up with your inequality. It's okay to draw, I mean, make a graph, or do a number line, and, and put your graph up here to see it. Okay, any questions at all? For tonight, though, um, before you come back, I want to make sure that you look at this. Okay. The circle graph at the right shows the result of a survey that asked teens when you think humans will be able to live on the moon. If the margin of error is three, uh, plus minus three percentage points, what is the range of the percent of teens who say humans will live on the moon in 2100? Now, if anything, I want you to be able to come back and describe to me or explain to me what does it mean to have a margin of error? What does it mean to have a plus minus three percentage point margin of error? What is it? I, I, you know, right here, based on the information, 48% of teens believe that we will be able to, uh, you know, live on the moon by 2100. But with a margin of error 3 plus minus 3%, what does that mean to that number? How's it gonna, how's it gonna skew the number? Okay, so research on that, and I want you to come back and, and, and you know, share that piece of information out to the class. Okay, all right, that's it.